please subscribe to our channel, Pacific Front Untold, and be sure to leave a comment after watching a video. At the turn of the 20th century, Japanese and Russian imperial interests came into conflict as both sought expansion into Manchuria and Korea. This conflict, however, went far beyond East Asia. With Western involvement, the Russo-Japanese War could be considered World War Zero, becoming a global conflict that set the stage for two future world wars that would engulf nearly every nation on Earth. In the years preceding the Russo-Japanese War, France was allied with Russia, while Great Britain was allied with Japan. The remaining non-aligned great powers were Germany and the United States. However, with Germany's past involvement in the Triple Intervention and the subsequent demand for Japan to return the Liaotung Peninsula to China, Japan turned to the United States for support. Specifically, in 1904, the president of the Privy Council, Ito Hirobumi, sent Japanese diplomat Baron Kaneko Kentaro to the United States to help cultivate friendly relations between the two nations. Kaneko was perfect for the job, since he had graduated from Harvard Law School in 1888 and already had many close contacts in America, including future U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, whom he met in 1890 through a mutual Harvard friend. Kaneko's understanding and adoption of American culture helped them become acquainted, and they remained in touch even after Kaneko returned to Japan. The relationship between Roosevelt and Kaneko was such that Hirobumi wrote the following, Only President Roosevelt of the United States can stand impartially between Russia and Japan and advise them about achieving peace. As we know that you have previously been on intimate terms with the President, we want you to go immediately and meet him and tell him this privately, and also do your best to arouse the sympathies of the American people for Japan. Although yellow peril sentiments were widespread and increasing in the U.S., Kaneko was quickly welcomed back to America, especially by President Roosevelt. He arrived in March of 1904, a month into the Russo-Japanese War. In Washington, D.C., President Roosevelt invited Kaneko to the White House, dined with him, and even introduced Kaneko to his family and invited him to their vacations. In return, the Japanese diplomat shared his culture with Roosevelt, recommending books such as Bushido, The Soul of Japan, to the president. In his letter praising Bushido, Roosevelt wrote, It seems to me, my dear Baron, that Japan has much to teach the nations of the Occident, just as she has something to learn from them. I have long felt that Japan's entrance into the circle of the great civilized powers was a good omen for the world. Certainly I myself hope that I have learned not a little from what I have read of the fine samurai spirit and from the way in which that spirit has been and is being transformed to meet the needs of modern life. Roosevelt's comment on Japan joining the circle of great civilized powers was indeed correct and critical for the Russo-Japanese War. Starting in the 1850s and 1860s, the arrival of American Commodore Matthew Perry and the subsequent Meiji Restoration enabled the country to modernize and westernize. Japan, no longer feudal nor isolationist, opened up to the world, letting in trade, new ideas, technology, and culture. The Russo-Japanese War became a test of the success of their modernization, and winning the war would tell the other great civilized powers that Japan was on the rise. However, simply modernizing was not enough for victory. Just as Japan had looked to the West for inspiration to improve its military and make scientific advancements, Japan did the same when it came to financial and public support during the war. With Roosevelt on its side, Japan was even better positioned than before to win the Russo-Japanese War. After reading another of Kaneko's suggestions, Roosevelt wrote to him, I was able to understand the organization of the Japanese army and navy and the mentality of their officers and men in detail, and in the aforesaid war situation, I became firmly convinced that your country will ultimately gain victory. 
The close friendship that Kaneko cultivated with President Roosevelt was extremely beneficial to Japan. Not only was Roosevelt beginning to take their side, but his meetings with Kaneko were relayed back to Hirobumi and Emperor Meiji in coded telegrams, giving them a better understanding of the U.S. president's thoughts. In the United States, Kaneko was strategic. He was, after all, sent on a mission that would determine Japan's fate and global standing. Introducing Japanese culture to Roosevelt was one strategy. Another was utilizing his connections as a Harvard graduate by appealing to Harvard clubs across the country. A piece of advice he received from the president. Kaneko also began touring the U.S., speaking with powerful congressmen, senators, and financiers. To his audience, he sold them the story that Japan was grateful for America's help with westernization. In return, Japan wanted to help America westernize the rest of Asia. At Sanders Theater in Harvard, Kaneko spoke to audiences about topics ranging from westernization, Christianity, and the Yellow Peril, proposing that, now, after having thus adopted Western civilization and assimilated our manners and customs to those of the most advanced nations, we felt it our duty to do our utmost to extend these blessings to other Oriental nations whom we could influence. Japan is really acting as the pioneer of Anglo-American civilization in the East. It is for this which we are fighting, and only this which is the meaning of the war. His work paid off. Banks sold millions of dollars of Japanese bonds, and Harvard clubs helped spread the word by distributing printed copies of his speeches. Furthermore, Japan was winning the war, which made Roosevelt happy as well. Ultimately, in May 1905, Hirabumi invited Roosevelt to negotiate the end of the war between Russia and Japan. In the months prior to the negotiations, the president met with Kaneko to discuss his thoughts on the future of Japan, saying that he believed in creating a Japanese Monroe Doctrine and would support Japan with all his power. In September, representatives of Japan and Russia met with Roosevelt to sign the Treaty of Portsmouth in New Hampshire which would later earn the president a Nobel Peace Prize. The treaty recognized Japanese supremacy in Korea, and it gave the Liaotung Peninsula, the South Manchurian Railway, and the southern part of Sakhalin Island to Japan. Ultimately, Japan's victory and new gains demonstrated that the country was a rising global power and not to be underestimated. The story of Kaneko, Roosevelt, and the Russo-Japanese War is one of diplomacy and cross-cultural connections, and it reveals a lesser-known narrative of Japanese-U.S. relations in the early 20th century. Relations that would change drastically from allies during World War I to naval competitors and increasing estrangement during the interwar years, and finally, to bitter enemies during World War II.